Hello, welcome back guys. Um, I am currently 10 weeks out from my first ever show. Finally actually doing one this year. You will literally cut my balls off if I bail on this. So, like, I have yeah. to do... Um, and I'm really in the, like, mood to do it. Uh, things are just going well. Now, we've settled in our flat, we've been here a year, pretty much yeah. now. Um, working in a gym is obviously a great place to prepare for a show. Uh, I think so the issue last year was that we obviously moved, like probably a month before the, was it Body Power last year? Yeah, and I was not even close. And we like, were stressed. Ten, week, ten weeks out now, I look better than I was on the day of Body Power last year because I wasn't doing anything right. Like, it was all fucked and a mess. And then all the trolls and stuff, they, they really did get to me as well. But this year, I just don't care. And um, just focusing on it and doing it properly is making it way easier. So anyway, uh, before I ramble, we just got back from um, Hungary, Budapest. Mm. It was a fun holiday, like we our first yeah, one together. So, so we'll go through like what what it's like there and stuff before we go on to the training video. Um, so we flew out Friday, right? Yeah. Got there about four o'clock. Um, went through the city. We got lost getting to Airbnb because I'm an idiot. I don't know how to use Google Maps. Um, <laughs> you you were stressing out on me. It was fun. Yes. <laughs> Once we actually got into the apartment, we got some pictures and stuff. It was actually really nice. Budapest is cheap. Hungary is, is so cheap. So if you want a fun holiday in like a really pretty city, um, the architecture there is really cool. Don't make the mistake we did. It's not Euros. It's yes. Hungary. Is it foreign? Uh, hung Hungarian foreign. Hungarian HUF. foreign. So we got 200 euros out um, and then realised th the night before that we had the wrong fucking currency. So it's like 400 huff is about a pound <laughs> or a, a, a one euro. They're about the same now. Um, but everything there is really cheap, so let's just give an example. Uh, so we got right, uh, the drinks in the ruins bar we went to, oh, that was really yeah, cool. That was good. Um, it's a really cool place, so tell them how much it was and what we got. So basically I didn't realise that obviously they're like bigger shot measures, so they're kind of like doubles. So basically 40 CL um, is, or, yeah. or 40 ml 40 um, is a single to them, so you ordered two doubles, yeah, which is so like 80 like, ml of vodka. So it's like eight shots I kind of bought, um, mm -hmm. and that came to, I think it was equivalent of £15. Yeah, so, so. That's, that's cheap. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> these bars are really cool as well, so people go there for stag do's quite a lot. Like on the flight out there, there was a stag do going out there. Yeah, um, noisy. <laughs> food there is cheap, but the average cost of like a meal out is about a tenner, like for a proper meal. Um, so that, I mean, maybe 15 quid if you're going somewhere nicer. So you can really actually get like a lot for your money there. Yeah. Um, we stayed in the nice part of town called, uh, we stayed on, in Buda um, yeah. and the Buda Castle. So we got some really good pictures there. Um, at night it is really, like it's one of the prettiest places I've been to at night actually. Yeah, we're about a five minute walk from the castle and you can kind of just walk around the walls and um, all the buildings are really well lit at night in um, yeah, Budapest as well. So you can see like the parliament, which we'll probably I'll put some pictures on yeah, this, yeah. but yeah, we see all the parliament lit up, all the river, and yeah, there's loads of bridges. As it, well. Yeah, like I've been to quite a few European cities, and it's not like any I've been to at all. Like, I mean, the Danube is obviously the biggest river in Europe, it's huge, and there, there was like an island in the middle of the river we went to, which has got like a little free zoo on it, and some hot baths, and all this sort of thing. So, yeah. like, but the hot baths are like a quite a common uh, or the, a known for thing in Budapest, so. It was it was February, so we didn't go in them. But I can imagine in summer it'd be awesome. And then we went and had them. like a look at what they looked like. They looked really. They cool. looked good, but I just didn't like the idea of getting in a really nice hot bath and then getting out into like what is it like nine <laughs> degrees? Yeah. Weather. Oh, it was. It would have Cold. been. <laughs> I would have frozen my nips off, so I wasn't doing that. But they're, they're cheap to do everything there: drinks, all that sort of food. Um, for some of the food there, they've got some delicacies. Mostly, it's just stews. Um, it's like a Hungarian thing, but we tried chimney cakes, which are like these delicious donut-y things. So they get like a, co a cylinder um, and they wrap this dough around it and then they bake it in the oven. So it's like crisp on the outside mm. and soft on the inside. Then they cover it in whatever sort of topping you want. So like sugar, um, chocolate sauce, yeah. Uh, you can get you can put some of them like stuff with ice cream. Pastry donut mix, oh, wasn't it? It kind was. Of thing, yeah. If you go there, get them. They are they're so nice. So safe to say, I didn't eat well while I was there <laughs> at all. Um, but I've only gained like a pound, and honestly, that's easy to get rid of. I've got, I'm ten weeks out. It's not a problem. Although we are going to Venice in like ten days. Yeah, that was a last minute book. <laughs> uh, but, uh, 
I'll just eat pasta and you can eat I can just chicken. eat chicken. <laughs> Honestly, I've, I've been to Italy a few times and their food is some of the night. Italian and French food, like in restaurants, is so good. Yeah. Um, pizza, weirdly, Italian pizza isn't great, but their fresh pastas and their fresh meat dishes are like so delicious. So excited That's for that. That's a bit of pest anyway. Yeah. But yeah, that was, we saw... What else did we do? We went the to zoo. the zoo, Budapest Zoo. Yeah, on the Sunday, and we went to Hero Square as well, yeah. which was really good. Yeah, there's a lot of nice, like, everywhere you walk in the city, like in the actual main city, there's some really nice architecture. Um, it's not just a nice place to walk around, eat out, um, just a general city. The buildings just look amazing. Like we caught one kind of in sunset, and you could see like all the gold detail on it and yeah, like come yeah. out as well and the bridges are really like awesome to, at night all lit up and everything you see them all going down the river it's like it, it's very pretty so a uh, good location to go as a couple or or if yeah. you want to go and get smashed it's cheap there as well yeah and all the bars so anyway yeah that was a holiday yeah. really nice um we're back to training hard for the next 10 days before we go away to venice it's only a three-day holiday again so it's not gonna really affect training too much and then after that i'm balls to the wall for contests so uh, I found out some more information about the contest I'm, I'm going to enter. Um, it's, so the PCA ones are based on, you have two categories. You have over five foot eight and under five foot eight, or it might be five foot nine, and you don't have a weight limit. So it's just, um, it's just height based. Whereas the, um, the other one I was going to do with Raheel possibly on the 3rd of May, which is mm. why I'm thinking like it's probably going to be the best, is a bit different and I might have to do some fudging with my height. So it's, it's weird. So if I'm five foot 11 to six foot, which I think I am, I'm, I'm pretty sure I am, if I stick my hair up and stand on my tiptoes and maybe ha do a lot of hanging to sort of stretch my spine out, I can weigh 212 pounds. But if I'm five foot 10 to five foot 11, I can only weigh 205 pounds, which is seven pounds. That's, I mean, that's a lot less. Um, considering at the moment today, I weigh 230. So I've already got 28, sorry, my maths is off. 230 to 212, uh, 18. 18. I've got, <laughs> so, I've got, yeah. so I've got 18 pounds to lose or more in 10 weeks of man, which is very feasible. Like that's obviously easily doable, two pound a week. Um, but 205, I'd have to lose some muscle mass and I'm actually growing as I'm cutting. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that. I'm gonna get myself- Ideally prop you wouldn't want to lose muscle weight. No. Like, that's not your goal. So. No, I want, so if, if it turns out that I'm gonna be five foot 10 to five foot 11, I'm gonna to have to pick a slightly different show, but there's other ones on the 3rd of May and around that weekend anyway, so I'd be able to go to one of them. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go and train chest and arms now and do 30 minutes cardio. We're gonna record that and get back to that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, let's just get to the workout. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as you saw, um, we had to cancel our trip to Venice because the, the coronavirus outbreak was a bit of a bummer really, but it kind of makes sense. But we're going to correct, cancel it or move it forward to after my competition at the end of May as kind of a reward because um, we might not be able to get the money back for the flights. So it's, but if we move the flights, then we don't lose out on it. So, a bit of shit, but it kind of <clears throat> works out in my favor. And honestly, I don't want to go abroad and then come back with some fucking horrible virus six weeks out because um, apparently the coronavirus has like um, a two week incubation period and then you get really ill. Um, I really don't want to get that and apparently Northern Italy is like absolutely flooded with it at the moment And we're going to be going for a busy international airport at a popular tourist destination. So it just it just seems silly to go um, But it's just one of those things. So uh, yeah, we started off with chest with um, uh, dumbbells I much prefer dumbbells to uh, bench press at the moment simply because bench press just seems to aggravate my rotator cuff and I had twinge my rotator cuff uh, the week before teaching a buddy class at work actually, um, somehow. I think I just didn't warm up properly before I did the class. So during this uh, workout, uh, my shoulder was a little bit grindy, which is why I didn't go heavier. 45 kilo incline for me isn't that heavy. As you can see, my first set I did 16 reps, um, and then I did 10, and then I did 10 again for my free working sets. Um, normally I'd go up to like 50, 55, and try and push my strength a bit here on the first exercise. Um, but I, my shoulder was feeling a little tweak, so I was like, it's not worth risking it. Sometimes It's better to train smart sometimes and pushing yourself and making an injury worse. Um, especially shoulders, you got, I always, I'm very careful with shoulders. If you fuck your shoulder, you can ruin a whole week's training. You can't do any upper body, like even doing some arm stuff, your shoulders will be hurting. So yeah, chest is my genetic strong point uh, for one, so I don't have to do that much for it. But it's also because I just have that mind-muscle connection. You can see just how much my chest is tensing every single rep um, on all of my exercises. And I've been trying to throw in some new training styles for chest 
and it's just made my chest explode with very few sessions. So um, things like this, the muscle rounds for machine press and for doing it on, on dumbbell flies are insane. You get such a good pump, it really overloads the muscle. So you break the set into chunks, uh, four chunks, six reps at a time. You can also break it into three chunks do eight reps at a time. But it basically means you're doing a 24 rep set um, and you're getting a real pump. And you can see how much I'm squeezing my chest at the top of this movement. A lot of people just go and move the, the weight around and really don't get that contraction, that tensing at the top or the stretch at the bottom of chest. That is what seriously activates the muscle fibers. So as you can see, I get closer. I properly tense hard at the top. I don't just push the weight forward. I physically really try and tense my chest like I'm posing. Um, this will just get all the fibers activated. Uh, and on a muscle round set, the pump is just insane, especially when you're on uh, like any kind of gear, it's really gonna increase the effectiveness of these. Um, different stuff, just massively overload training, basically. Uh, and I found it's, I've been doing this for legs and lots of other body parts, and it is so effective. Also with muscle round, you only sort of need to do two sets, because doing two sets, you're doing 48 reps. It's the same as doing five sets of 10 reps pretty much. So there's no need to do more than that and it gets the workout done quicker with the same intensity. So I'm hoping chest is one of these body parts that helps me win this contest. Um, the same thing with flies. I really focus on that deep stretch and tense at that top for like a half a second. It's where people go wrong. They're really just not even activating their chest when doing flies half the time. Uh, when, when I watch people, the form is just so bad for flies often. So you really want to get that deep stretch at the back and then press forward and tense hard in the middle. Um, you, tensing during a rep is good. It's gonna help you activate more fibers. And you know, it's just one, I just had this good mind muscle connection with chest because I've trained it for like, over a decade. Um, when you really get that down, it'll, it'll get a much more growth out of it. And doing flies, you're better off doing light. Like, I'm not doing very much weight here at all. I'm just really focusing on getting a pump, getting the contractions in. And you can see you know, my muscle fibers all stretching out there every rep. That's what you really want to go for. Um, so after this, that's all we did for chest. Really short, really simple, and my chest is sore as hell today from doing this. Like honestly, it kills. <clears throat> then we moved on to some shoulders because I really want to get my shoulders to be built out as much as possible. We were going to do a forearm day, but I figured it was going to take too long and I had meal prep and stuff to do. So we changed it up today and we did um, shoulders instead of quick. Only two exercises, but my shoulders are sore as hell today from doing them because of the intensity. You don't need to do that much as long as you're hitting stuff really hard sometimes. So start off with face pulls. I always try and hit rear delts as hard as I can. I um, really try and bring out the full roundness of the shoulder. If you don't hit rear delts enough, um, it will make you have a, a really undeveloped shoulder. It actually seriously brings out the shoulder from the side and the front if you have a rear delt. And obviously in all back poses, you know, having a big strong rear delt is going to really help you know, how you look. Um, and in the start of the video of the posing, you saw you know, my shoulders are, are pretty well developed and I just want to try and keep improving on that. Then the final exercise of the workout was very simple, upright row superset side laterals. I absolutely love this superset. Um, it is an absolute killer, it really burns, and it will get you your shoulders pumped and massive in a short space of time. I never train that heavy for shoulders. I just go for high volume and try and get a crazy pump, and it's honestly helped my shoulders get massive. I never do heavy press, I don't feel the need. Just doing side raises and upright rows and things like that for volume and correct form is what you want. You want to activate the shoulders, try and take the traps out of the equation, which a lot of people fail to do. <laughs> so you can see, you're always going to use the traps to an extent, but you want to activate that delt as much as possible. And training in a vest can really help you do that. Um, so don't be afraid to you know, chuck a vest on when doing shoulders to make sure you're actually contracting the muscles you're supposed to be. Use the mirror as a guide. Um, it really helps. And yeah, just workouts going good, 10 weeks out. Um, I'm feeling in great shape for 10 weeks out and things are really gonna come in sharp. My coach wants to get me ready like early, uh, proper early so we can mess around with refeeds, get, you know, see how I can look glycogen pumped up, dried out, that sort of thing. <coughs> um, at the end of this week, I'm changing my cycle to uh, 400 um, te uh, test prop, 400 trend ace and 450 primo ace. So down to short esters, I've never used them before. Um, I'll let you guys know how that makes me feel and stuff. Um, and it should really help me dry out and just look crazy, crazy. So things are going good, I'm excited. And this year, you know, I, I, I really feel it's gonna work for me. So thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for supporting me and all that. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you next time.